Hello and welcome to Guerrilla Marketing. Basically it's a way to make something viral with a very inexpensive um, budget and using your creativity to the max. So I'm calling it thinking way outside the box. What exactly is Guerrilla Marketing? It's using non-traditional media or traditional media in an untraditional way to stir consumer interest usually in a low-cost way. What I just got done saying. And um, what it does is it relies more on your creativity than just throwing money at the problem. Uh, it also um, allows you to um, instead of investing lots of money you can invest your energy, you can invest your time and you know let the creativity speak for itself. Um, my first design professor said there's two ways to solve every problem. One is to be creative and second is to throw money at it. And at the time, of course, I was a college student so I thought, well, I'll be creative. Well, he never told me there's a certain charm to actually throwing money at a problem, but uh, I didn't learn that till I had money. So, uh, creativity, you know, well, that's the way to go. And, um, you know, it's a way to generate buzz as opposed to hype. What buzz is, is it's word of mouth, it's people telling other people, it's, um, you know, not using traditional mass media to draw attention to something. Whereas hype is when a company has a lot of money and they can throw a lot of money at promotions, at ads, at, um, you know, public relation campaigns, you know, whatever they can do to draw attention to their product. Sometimes the, you know, hype falls through. Uh, I remember back in the day when Aliens 3 came out, you know, Alien and Aliens, you know, were great movies, so um, there's a lot of hype about the Aliens 3 movie, and the day that it came out, you couldn't get within you know five miles of a movie theater that's how backed up they were all the shows were sold out well it didn't live up to its hype because it was a terrible movie and um, the following weekend um, you know I eventually got to see the movie and I pretty much had the theater to myself so hype falls through buzz doesn't but you can't pay for buzz it's something that has to happen organically but we can use creativity to stir that, that kind of buzz that um, you know sharing of whatever we're trying to persuade people about so all right some principles of guerrilla marketing it's usually for small businesses but you'll see in some of the examples in the other video uh, big businesses jump into it uses psychology. There's ways of, um, I don't want to say manipulating, but manipulating people using psychology. There's a way of persuading people with psychology. Um, it's using, you know, the way the uh, mind works, its processes in favor of whatever you're trying to advertise or market. Uh, for example, there's something known as priming, uh, one of my favorite uh, psychological ideas, and that is if you're exposed to something, it brings whatever that idea to the forefront of your mind. It makes it salient, and by priming someone, when they later go on to uh, try to purchase something, your product is in the front of their mind, is salient. Where do you want to be in the uh, cons uh, customer's mind? You want to be the first thing they think about. So if you, um, you've been putting ads for your green beans and everything in magazines, on TV, you know, just, you know, bombarding, um, you know, pictures of green beans everywhere with your product, don't say anything about it, just, you know, kind of tease them into it. So when they're in the store and they see that actual product, your mind has been primed toward getting that product. So using psychology to your advantage. It certainly attracts new customers, people that haven't thought about your product before, have never heard of your company, but um, it also works for established um, companies, customers, etc. And what that does is it makes them excited again about whatever it is you're trying to sell. Definitely uses technology, um, especially when it comes to generating buzz, say on social media, um, on uh, the internets. Uh, through memes, you know, things like that. 
you know, using technology to uh, your advantage. And, uh, yeah, it, it works great for, um, you know, small groups rather than trying to advertise to everyone all at once, you know, like a Super Bowl ad. Here it's more, um, you know, a few people at a time, interactive, grab their attention, get them involved, make them tell their friends. All right, some uh, techniques, you know, trying to make something go viral. Um, you know, you'll have consultants out there that say, oh, I can make your video go viral. You know, you use these hashtags, you do this, you do that. Uh, once again, that's more hype, you know, and does your product actually live up to that hype? Uh, viral is something that just happens. It's organic. Um, people see something, they find it funny, they find it interesting, they share it with their friends, their friends share it with their friends. Um, you can't buy that. You know, you can try to. But, um, you know, something that happens naturally and usually because of good use of creativity. Uh, it certainly is a um, something that you can use making a presence somewhere, you know, let's say uh, at a sporting arena, you know, putting your ad, you know, every six feet on the ground, you know, you have to be uh, socially distanced anyway, right? So why don't you put an advertisement every six feet away? So it, it um, creates your company's presence at that site, something like that. Grassroot uh, campaigns, you know, starts local, spreads, goes all over the place. You know, you're not trying to um, persuade everyone in the United States. You know, so start with your neighborhood, start with your city, start with your town, and, um, you know, see what happens to it. I already kind of explained what Buzz is. It's um, word of mouth advertising that you can't pay for. It just happens. It's organic. When you try to pay for it, it becomes hype. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can certainly get experimental with these ads, interactive ads. We've, you know, uh, talked about that, online interactive ads, but also experimental things where, you know, people are actually going and touching things or moving things or manipulating things. Um, that's always fun, you know. Um, you know, leave, leave some uh, Lego somewhere with your company name on it and, you know, have the people interact with it any way that they want. You know, they're going to see your company's logo, they're going to start associating it with fun, and it works that way. Uh, weight campaigns, also known as uh, kind of teaser ads, um, you only get a little bit of the ad at a time. You know, you know, you see the green bean can. Okay, we, I'm seeing it all over the place. You know, you're getting me to think about green beans and getting that brand of green beans when I go to the store. What is it about these green beans? Well, the next time you see the can of green beans, you know, uh, somebody's holding it. And you can't see who the somebody is. You can just see the hand and the arm. Okay, you know, someone's holding a green beans. And then, you know, uh, the third week out on this campaign, you, you, you see that uh, it's someone picking out this can of green beans from uh, a uh, food pantry. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, green beans, good for everyone. And also, you know, good for people who are hungry and don't have a roof over their head. Well, next week after that, you see that the company is actually, you know, uh, running these um, places where people can go, you know, pick up a can of their beans anonymously these things have pull tops so you know you don't have to have a can opener to open them and you know they're good right out of the can so you know you kind of give it to them a little at a time instead of the whole ad all at once uh, the tissue pack uh, yeah put your name logo uh, slogan big idea on something that you use every single day you know put your company's name on a toothbrush uh, put it on a comb uh, on, on a tissue pack you know have the tissue actually coming out of uh, you know the nose of your um, mascot for your uh, company and you know it makes it memorable but it's there every day it's in your car it's in your purse it's uh, in your uh, bathroom it's uh, you know next to the stove wherever you keep your tissues um, yeah just be on an everyday object so uh, the people see it every day and it reinforces that message over and over again. You know, sometimes it takes a lot of exposure for people to actually notice your ads. Well, using, um, uh, I was going to call it, say, a viral marketing, but same idea. Grill marketing is a way of um, putting your name on everyday products so they get to see it every single day. 
All right, uh, a couple of examples here. Um, also, there's another video that uh, you're supposed to watch this week that will show you examples of famous campaigns. Um, one was the Blair Witch Project. Um, when uh, the movie f you know, first came out, there was actually a documentary done on one of the cable channels that played the Blair Witch Project, you know, these kids going out trying to find the Blair Witch, as a true documentary. And they also had the actors who played the parts be out of the country when the movie first came out. So they played it as though it was real. And people went and saw this movie. They were scared because they believed it. And of course it came out later that no, it's, you know, it was all made up. Very uh, inexpensive budget. Uh, unknown actors. Um, the documentary was a mockumentary. And, you know, I, I saw it late in um, that year. And I already knew that it was fake. So when I saw it in the theater, it was terrible. Um, you know, I went to the dollar theater to see it, and I wanted my dollar back. It was that bad. But uh, by using this kind of word of mouth, it's real, you're going to be really scared. Um, you know, they didn't spend much on production. They ended up, you know, grossing more than uh, $480 million. So it worked. Ah, Aqua Teen Hunter Force colon uh, movie film for theaters. Uh, there's something called a Moonite that is part of this cartoon, Aqua Teen Hunger, for Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And um, what they did, the, the people promoting the movie, is took a, a light bright. Remember light bright? You put little pegs in the board and they light up. Well, they did this, and uh, instead of putting words on it or you know whatever you do with light bright, they did uh, uh, the moon eyes uh, ignoc and ear giving the finger, and they put it in different places. Well, in order for a light bright to work, it has to be in a dark place. So they put, started putting them under bridges and in tunnels. Well, this happened right after 9-11. So people panicked. They thought it was a bomb. You know, didn't look like a bomb to me. But um, the city of Boston actually sued the promoters for more than a million dollars for having to bring out the bomb squad and see that no, this isn't a bomb. It's actually a uh, promo for a uh, movie, which I've never seen, actually. ESPN NFL 2003 by Sega. Their ads were more people doing YouTube videos and writing articles about how playing this video game on Sega um, blew their mind. Literally, they had to seek out therapy. It was so realistic that um, it mentally affected them. You know, well, for you know, teenage boys wanting to play in the, the latest uh, football game, yeah, I want to play the game that will make me psychotic. So, you know, they went out and they bought this game because it was so hyped. And, you know, the big deal about this game was it used the helmet cam, which you know, was a new idea both on TV and also the idea of a first-person perspective on a video game. Well, it, it kind of blew up because the game was terrible. The promotion was great, game was terrible. So um, that's why you probably have never played ESPN NFL 03 by Sega. So, all right, that's Guerrilla Marketing. Please watch the other video off of YouTube that uh, shows you some examples of Guerrilla Marketing. And uh, this is definitely something that you can use for your final project. It's inexpensive, it's uh, attractive, it's interactive it's creative so uh, when you're thinking of should you know I use a print ad should I use a radio ad and yeah, seriously consider uh, a guerrilla marketing ad campaign um, because they work